Hey everybody, I'm Chris Hoyna. I'm a senior product manager at Oracle, and I just recently wrote this article, and it's titled Python and the Oracle Autonomous Database, Three Ways to Connect. Um, one of the ways I use the uh, Python Oracle DB driver, and then the other two ways are through um, ORDS, which is Oracle REST Data Services. So there's different REST APIs that you can use to connect or to interact with your database. Um, but what I thought I would do is go straight to GitHub and look at the repository here. So it's gonna be in my blog repo, and then I have a section here for Python. And then you'll see this configuration directory right here. Um, and then you actually have this bizconfind.csv. We've got a file here for these OAuth2 credentials, which we'll go over in the third video. And then we've got test case one, two, and three. Those are all the Python files. And we've also got our wallet credential file as well. So we're gonna look at the test one file. So I'm going to switch to VS Code here and I'll just open up this test one Python file here. So all this stuff is commented. You could actually skip this video. You could just go straight to GitHub because everything that you see here is it's consistent with what you see in the repo. It's all gonna be nice and commented. You, you pretty much have everything that you need. If you wanna do this in the Oracle Autonomous database, you can sign up for a, a free tier account and you have access to two databases so you can set all that up. So first things first on line three here, I'm just importing this Oracle DB uh, driver or this library. Uh, and then here's where it starts to get not tricky, but these are some of the considerations. So I'm importing all of these credentials. Like this is all sensitive information, like this username, password, configuration directory, um, where my wallet is located and the wallet password, and then the DSN or the service name. I'm gonna go to the wallet credentials. So I'm gonna go to this wallet credentials.py. Um, so I've got my username. I've got the, the password for that username. Um, and then I've got this configuration directory. Um, the configuration directory, this is something that you'll, that is detailed in the Python-Oracle uh, DB documentation, but uh, I do have some instructions here. So you will need uh, your ewalt.pem file and your tnsnames.ora file. Cool. So what is that? Where do you get that? No, I don't know. Nobody knows. Um, it's actually in my blog, but I will show you how to uh, acquire that. So we're going back to our cloud console and we want to select the database connection. Um, I'll download the wallet while that's downloading. And I'm just gonna do password uh, one, two, three, four. You, you actually need the wallet password here in a second. So let me just download this. This is gonna download a zip file. There are a, there's a lot of files that are in here. But while I'm here, I wanted to show these connection strings. So if you remember this DSN here, actually corresponds to these service service levels right here. So at this point, my wallet has downloaded, or at, least, or at least the zip is downloaded. So let me just go ahead and pull that over here. All right, and so I'll just rename that. And this, this is where all the important files are. So we'll need the ewallet.pem file. So what I'll do is I'll just drag that over here temporarily, and then we'll need the tnsnames.ora file. All right, so if I go back to my code, uh, I'm looking at line 14 and uh, line 19, right? So my instructions say we need to put the ewallet, pem, and the tnsnames.ora. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and select both of these, and I will put them into the configuration directory, all right? And they're in there now, okay? Close this out. All right. So we have successfully uh, done what we need to do for... Uh, 14, and then the same thing for uh, 19. Everything's in there. And then my wallet password, super secret. And then the DSN. So I can actually go over here and say I want the medium. And I'm going to put that right here. And let me go back to the test one. All right. So line three, we've done that. Line seven, we've done that. And now line 11, this is when it gets into all the code that's necessary for the Oracle DB driver to work, right? All this syntax is unique to the uh, Oracle driver here, but basically we just wanna set the user to the username that we have up here, the password to the password that we have here, DSN is DSN, configuration directory is this, I've named it Cedar. Uh, wallet location, it's right here, wallet location, and then wallet password is just gonna be wallet password. As connection, uh, with connection.cursor, so it's basically just like a virtual cursor that's gonna be entering in that information for you. Uh, and 
that's what basically calls up to the database or connects to the database. Now, while, while we're in, uh, we can execute this SQL here, right? So um, I'm gonna select star from this biz confine table where location equals ZAF or South Africa. And then we're gonna order by value in ascending order, okay? You do need to escape these quotes. You are gonna remove that semicolon, which is what you would typically see like, you know, in SQL developer or the SQL worksheet. Uh, and then we're gonna execute that code and then we're gonna print it so we can do that here. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll pause here for a second. Let me go back here and into wallet credentials and I'm just gonna grab my credentials for the dev user. All right, so now if you can see here in the upper right hand corner, I'm signed in as the dev user. So I'll go to the SQL worksheet and since I just created this for specifically for this, there's only this one table here, but I'm going to go back to my test and I'm going to copy and paste the code that I have here just so you could see what it looks like in another presentation. Um, and then I'll add my, my colon here um, and then I will execute this. So you can get a good idea of what this what this is doing here. It's starting, it's going from lowest to highest. So it's 96.59113. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, um, you know, 102.293. So this content is too long to, to display, but I can actually download the output if I want. And it basically shows me everything. So now, I, I, if you see, I'm all the way up 104.7857. All right, bit of a diversion, but that's, that is what we should expect uh, when we execute this code, right? You're probably asking like, why do I need to do this Python if I could just log into the database that way? Well, I mean, if you're in the process of coding an application or perhaps you're working in data analysis and you wanna create a dashboard or something, this might be more convenient for you to do this, you know? Um, in the blog, what I did here was I ran this in an interactive window, so which is what I'll do here. So um, I can just run the selection line in the interactive window, and fingers crossed, this, this I'm doing this live, so hopefully it'll work. All right, so there we go. So that's my summary of everything, okay? And I can open this in this text editor here. What we'd expect to see is that since this is returned in ascending order, this number one, should be consistent with the number one that we see um, in the database actions here. So this is our first one here, right? So ID is 552, and then let's just look at the value, 96.59113, so this is 552, and then our value here is 96.59113. Bet if I go all the way down to the bottom, it'd be the same thing, right? So 77, that's the, that's the unique ID, and then the value is 104, 7857. So where's my script output, my text file? I'll make this bigger here. I got the, the unique ID of 77, and then we've got our value of 104.7857. So it's the same, magic. All right, so like I said, this information is in this GitHub uh, repository, which I will leave in the description. So this is test one. And what I'll do in the next video is I will review test two, and then in test three, we'll review the test3.py file. So I hope you learned something. If there's anything here that you wanna see more of, or if you want me to create a different video or expand on something, or if anything was unclear, um, you know, be sure to leave a message. Um, and also make sure you like and subscribe because my boss is probably watching. So thanks.